pet peeve about this is you have this big we'll call it a washer right it doesn't cover the entire size of the gear now my guess is that if there's a lower gear ratio reel they're gonna have a smaller cavity to put the drag stack so they only want to use one washer to fit them all but what it's not doing is okay, you see how much is exposed to that drag washer all right and see there's not much contact yeah it's got a large diameter of contact area you have the bottom plate that's making full contact but this just isn't doing anything I mean it's only making contact with this much of it and it shows you have that initial lowish kind of slippery drag you, you, you wrench it down and you have six seven pounds of drag you know hook set slides out you know to me, it's not a good fishing drag. Yeah, everybody's, oh, we want a smooth drag, you want a smooth drag, blah, 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 that and the other thing. I like drag stacks that incorporate or a fiber washer like this. I like that initial drag stick. I can set my drag to five pounds. Ram a hook set on a 7 worm hook, and it'll stick just enough to get that barb stuck and then it'll start paying outline smoothly I like that Daiwa has is good with that on this drag Abu is very good with that as well not the biggest fan of the Shimada drag stacks um, I came across something similar to that when I went from a van stall to a Z-Bass 25 the Z-Bass 25 had a spectacular drag stack Stupid strong, 35, you know, legitimate pounds of drag. Um, set it to 19 or 18, fighting tuna. The drag performed flawlessly. The reel fell apart, literally. Like, the rotor screws started backing out, and the screws that held the handle stem into the body of the reel started loosening, so the whole body would move while I'm fighting a, you know, 150-pound fish. Um, but the drag was smooth. But what I noticed was when I would, you know, plug on the surf, you know, chunk on the surf, you set the drag, you set the hook, and it's like you have, there's nothing there. You set the drag at 7 or 8 pounds, or hand tight, which is generally good enough to set the hook with a 4 inch bank sinker or 4 or 5 o treble hook. But it just gives up. Whereas the Van Stahl, you set it to 5 or 6 pounds, or hand tight, or whatever you're setting it to. And you ram a hook set, you got that good hook set, and then it's paying out line as you normally would. Immediately noticeable between those two reels. But yeah, so this is the die with drag stack. Washer after washer after greasy goodness. <clears throat> Come on. Another washer. I don't think this is Cal's. I, I don't know. I don't know if this is Cal's drag grease or not. I made a comment on one of the message boards that it was stickier than Cal's. But I really... It does feel stickier than Cal's drag grease. That's for sure. Whether I'm right on that or not, I don't know. Gear material. This is heavy. This is definitely heavy. Is there a file around?
Hmm. Kind of just skates right across. Well, it's definitely not brass. I don't want to say it's aluminum because it didn't file very well. It's not stainless. Is it Duralumin? I don't know. I'm not a metallurgist. But what I will do is, I'll get a measurement of the pinion. Pinion of the Shimano diameter. Shimano 6.53. Iowa seven. Seven point one on the Iowa. Actually, I'm going to be fair, seven point one three. Six point five three. Cool. What about the main gears? Shimano. And Daiwa. Interesting. That's just a function of the ratio of the reels. Inches per turn. You buy them that way. You pick them how you want them. One thing I do really like about the Shimano is the tiny little teeth. That is cool. Can you feel the difference? Absolutely. Is it a deal breaker? Not at all whatsoever in a million years. Because the mesh on these gears is perfect. It rolls out and rolls into the next one flawlessly. And it meshes the entire length of the tooth. No edge. Not on the edge. Barely feel the difference. If anything, it's just a different frequency. If you here's a, here's a good example. This is this is their their new Stella Fi three thousand. If you spin this handle. And again, this this has a, thou a couple thousand hours of use on it, thousands, thousands of fish, and it never even opened it yet, yet. You hear a different pitch coming out of this reel because of the finer teeth and more teeth. Regardless of what my opinion is, but my my opinion, my opinion is between these two reels. Ain't nobody beating a Stella for freshwater spinners. Nothing comes close. This is a USDM reel. And this is the H1 size Umayad magnesium double paddle handle. I hate single paddle handles on small spinners. Alright. So who makes the better reel? Ah, <sighs> man. The SV spool on the Daiwa will cast lighter baits. Nothing you can do on the Shimano can cast 8th ounce baits and under as easily, effectively, and efficiently as the Daiwa does. 
Nothing. No matter what Katubi spool bearings you buy from Hedgehog, no matter what fancy ceramic bearings you put in. Because, yeah, I uh, kind of know a thing or two about ceramics. Zirconium, silicone, whatever you want. I imported almost a thousand pairs. Good luck trying to find a good Chinese uh, manufacturer that doesn't make bearings that break after the first use or actually fit or don't grind. And then when you do put them in, after you get a good set, they're so noisy, forget it. You don't even want it. It's not even worth it. There's no performance increase between the higher end uh, stainless bearings that Shimano and Dio are using versus the super high end ABEC 9 ceramics from, you know, from China. Whether you're going to gain anything out of going to a, a micro ball bearing, I have an avail spool on another reel with um, Hedgehog uh, micro ball bearings. And I can throw a sixteenth of an ounce on that and an Abu MGX, no problems, none whatsoever. Um, doesn't cast as far as a spinner at a sixteenth of an ounce, but it casts fine. And I love the stupid looks you get when you're on a river going for trout when the guys are like, oh my god, why are you guys going bass fishing? It's great. It's, you know, it's, it's a highlight of the season. But, will it make a difference on the Daiwa? Maybe not with that spool. The spool, I don't have my scale in front of me, I can get a weight, but... I don't think you're getting too too far under an eighth of an ounce. Um, I've played around with the sixteenth of an ounce and it wasn't fun. It definitely wasn't. No way in hell you're going to be having a good time with an eighth of an ounce and below on the Metanium DC. The braking doesn't it doesn't do it well enough. It's got that extra ball bearing underneath the spool tensioner that's going to add friction to it. The spool's a little on the heavy side because it's got some of the guts in here that interact with the brake. But no, I would not consider this a ultra finesse, finesse bait caster. Can't get away with it. The MGL is a different story. Um, the Alder Baron's another story. Um, the Dio, however, can get close as well as throw ounce and a half baits all day long. As far as casting ease is concerned, all you know, all day, every day casting, all conditions, windy, um, equal on both on both reels. Um, I can throw a quarter ounce spinner bait, equal equidistant. There's no difference as far as you know who's going to cast further. Um, you set it to auto on that. You set it to five or six or eight or whatever you want on the dial, whatever degree you're, you know. <laughs> Whatever degree your thumb's received, um, however educated your thumb is on that reel, um, if you go down to below six, you better have an idea of what you're doing. Anything above six, you can pretty much fall asleep at the wheel and you don't have to worry about it. If you go above eight, you almost don't even have to touch the reel at splashdown, which is very strange because, you know, if you're like me, you purge your bearings, you run, um, you know, super lightweight oils in your bearings that you have to constantly be monitoring otherwise you might end up toasting a bearing halfway through the season you know every two to three trips you got to put a dab of oil um, comes with the territory if you like fast reels and fast spools uh, so when you get to that light of a, a bearing oil and the bearings are running true to be able to cast thumb free even at splashdown is kind of crazy um, I set my reels up very loose uh, I can get quite a bit of free spool out of all these reels. Um, I mean, this is a 200 size Calcutta. I haven't touched this thing inside of a solid month. And even with the line slapping up against, it can go for 20 seconds. So I set my reels up so they're pretty quick. Same goes for these guys. Um, 
So yeah, when it comes to the difference between them as far as casting all around baits, your crank baits, your jerk baits, your minnow baits, or whatever it might be, um, as far as ease, you can fish the Daiwa one-handed all day. You can cup underneath the reel, flick the drag star and spin the handle much easier than you can on that. So when you're casting, retrieving, jerk baits, cast, flick, you know, star your retrieve, jerk, jerk, flick, jerk, jerk, flick. Um, if you want to count that as far as your cast, uh, probably not. But drag star on this guy. Let's see, if you have medium sized hands, it's tough to get around, and when you do, it's got a sharp edge on the inside. Inside edge here on the drag star, if you can hear that, it's sharp. That wears on you after a while, especially if you fish one handed, um, which is a great way to fish spooks and you know, jerk baits. I'll call it even between the two on as far as this general casting duty. As far as max distance, equal. The Metanium DC will give you easier max distance, meaning you don't even have to think, especially in the wind. If you got a heavy gusty wind coming at you, no problems at all with the metanium. Die away, you got to pay attention a little bit more. But if I got to give max distance as far as total feet on a calm day, no wind, equal. Same spools, you know, breakings similar. You know, the T wing's spectacular, the forward cant the why am I pointing over there? The forward canting of the level one on the Shimano's far enough away that to kind of diminish the friction caused by the off center line coming off the spool. Um, I couldn't tell. I haven't measured on the field, I've only cast side by side. I'll get out and for max distance, I'll, I'll get out on the field and actually do a comparison because I'm curious myself who actually can you know, dump more line onto the to the grass than the other. But all that being said, what one would you buy? God. When I bought the Metanium, I paid three hundred and sixty dollars the first week it came out. Not a pre-order, just. Taking advantage of the Japanese yen being weak against the US dollar. Bought it from Japan Dackle for like 360. I bought two of them. Bought a bunch of JDM plugs and whatnot. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be a member of the Daiwa VIP program. Uh, it's if you know somebody, you can get on it if you're an inf influential. Uh, person in the tackle industry, which I like to think I am, tee hee hee. Um, you can get, you can sign up for the program. You get discounts, and the discounts make a difference. They do. Um, they're not free by any means. I'm not going to give out any numbers, but yeah, I still got to pay real money for these reels. Um, but it makes it easier, especially if you're a tackle hoe like myself who just loves gear. Which one would I buy? I would go with the Steez. And with everything else said, yeah, being able to go down lighter to lighter baits is great. I can walk on a river with an 8 foot uh, rod and I can throw eighth of an ounce Lucky Craft Wanderers and I can also throw ounce and a half, half swim baits. Same rod, same reel. This, I can't do that. The other thing that I'm kind of starting to get annoyed with, if you like that DC wine, you get a whole heck of a lot of it with this Metanium DC. Um, and it's just my opinion. The Metanium, or sorry, the Calcutta TEDC, the DC wine out of this reel, is, it's amazing. Every single cast you make, you're like, damn, it sounds good. Anytime that you're within earshot of somebody that can hear it, they're like, whoa, that sounds cool, right? The Metanium DC, 
every one you get, no matter what. It is so freaking loud. And it sounds hollow. It's not that same, um, you know, the robot, you know, the machines become... You know, intelligent, they're going to take over the world, kind of, oh my god, it sounds from, it's like it's from the future. It's different. It sounds hollow. And it's loud. It used to be if you were in the back of the boat and somebody else was in the front, they couldn't hear your Calcutta. Now the guy at the end of your cast can almost hear your reel. That gets old after a while. So yeah, I, I, would, I would say dollar for dollar. Titanium DC, which is the step down from the Antares DC. Um, pretty much the best reel still to this day in Shimano's lineup until they come up with like an MGL variant. Um, I'm going to go with Steve's over it. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. I mean, this is a long video. Um, I don't know how I would be able to do this in a quicker fashion. But uh, just wanted to cover a couple of things that really go into the in-depth details in between which makes what each one tick. Um, I wasn't going to do a whole full teardown. Um, re this reel is, is, is still flawless. Um, had it really been taken a beating as far as getting dunked and submerged, I'd tear it down all the way to the frame. Um, I don't feel like doing that on camera. Not not now. It's late in the day. Um, what I can tell you is, when you go underneath here, which is the ball bearing underneath here, that little E-clip, I can't tell if that has a nub, there's a little bit grease. It might be a C-clip, but either way, it's a pain in the ass. I've dealt with hundreds of bait casters. This one was a pain in the ass. I don't even know why it was so difficult. That was on the other one. Yeah, I think the metanium uses a bushing. Who cares? I mean, it does make a difference. I hear guys say that they can cast these diastases at with zero break on it, and you know, the same people that need six or four or eight or ten or you know, don't know how to fish. If you can cast this reel, it's a little tiny, tiny sewing machine thimble of a spool bait casting reel with zero breaking and zero spool tension. Then there's something wrong with your ball bearings. I would love to see somebody throw a spinnerbait with the mag set at zero with the way my spools are set up. I would love to see it. I'd buy, I'd, I'd, if you can make 200 casts in a row without a blow up, I would buy you two of these reels. If you could set the brakes to zero and get the same distance as you were if you had the brakes at six. Consistency. Consistently. I see guys talking about, you know, ball bearing on level one, blah, blah, blah. How many reels have a ball bearing supported level one on both sides? Please tell me. Does it make a difference? I'll tell you what it makes a difference. When you go like this in front of your friends, when you're sitting here in the winter time, and you ain't doing anything, you sit there and spin it. That's when it makes a difference. Yeah, I got a ball bearing. No, sorry, wrong reel. But yeah, so, you get the point. I'm not biased. I love the Metanium DC. I love the Stellas, Ella Saltigas, Calcuttas, you know, Lexes, anything you can imagine. Abus are spectacular, some of their reels. When it comes to the high-end bass baitcaster, I'm going Stees. Thanks for watching. And to my favorite YouTuber, keep your dick in the vice.